My name is Vanessa and I am the program and member and member experience manager for the Greater Coachella Valley Chamber of Commerce. Um, welcome to today's GCV Educate in partnership with the Small Business Development Center. Um, with me today is Ryan Stuhl, who is a social media marketing consultant for the Small Business Development Center. Today uh, we have, as you see on the screen, going to focus on social media. And um, just a couple housekeeping rules. We are recording this session. Um, also, if you have any questions, feel free to just enter them in the chat and at towards the end or the Q&A and Ryan will uh, share more about that. Um, at the end of this webinar, I will go ahead and share with you the recording link along with the PowerPoint as well as Ryan's contact information. Um, let's see, Ryan, anything you'd like to add to that? Um, no, well, I mean, yeah, but I'll, <laughs> it's part of the presentation. No worries. Like, I'm sorry. No, no, um, it's fine. I'll, go ahead, Ryan. I'll let you take this away. Okay. Yeah. So we are, um, I'm a consultant for the Coachella Valley Small Business Development Center. Um, we are a part of the Orange County Inland Empire Network. Uh, we, <clears throat> As an SPDC, generally we work in all 50 states. We um, we have networks all across the country. Uh, it's always completely free. So if you wanted to like consult with me um, or meet with any of our other consultants or e even across the network or do any of the webinars, it's all completely free at no cost. Um, we are partnered with the Small Business Administration and we get some funding and partnerships with the uh, California Governor's o Office of Business and Economic Development, which is, we call it GoBiz. Um, <clears throat> and we are all small business owners, just like yourself. Um, all the consultants are entrepreneurs. So, you know, you, you know, when you're talking to us or consulting with us that you're talking to a peer um, and we're just, you know, we're trying to help. So this is me. Um, I... Again, my name is Ryan Stoll. I'm a digital marketing consultant. Uh, I do everything from search engine optimization, website development and design, social media marketing, email marketing, content marketing, all that good stuff. Um, that is my calendar link right there. I'll also put that in the chat uh, later on towards the end of the webinar. Um, and that will be in the information packet sent to you. So if you wanted to meet with me and talk about digital marketing, we could certainly do that. Again, 100% free. And, you know, I always look forward to the new challenges. So, <clears throat> you know, hit me with your best shot. I bet you can't stop me. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> uh, where is, okay, yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk um, briefly about just digital marketing as a whole. Um, it's important to contextualize social media marketing inside of the huge chasm that is digital marketing. I mean, um, you know, I don't think I put it in this presentation, but in a previous one, I have like a slide that's just pictures of all the different logos of digital marketing programs that are out there. Um, and there are thousands. It's literally impossible to stay abreast of all of it. Um, so it's important that we kind of contextualize what social media marketing actually is and how we approach it as marketers and as business owners. Um, we'll talk about the difference between outbound and inbound marketing. Um, that's basically traditional marketing versus digital marketing. Um, then we'll talk social media platforms. You know, what are they? What do they do? Um, and the benefits of social media marketing and digital marketing, how to actually do it. And then coming up with some goals and some strategies to make your social media marketing more effective. Um, so during this presentation, um, please feel free to use the chat box to talk amongst yourselves or to talk to me if you want to. Um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a laid back guy. So if you want to throw anything in the chat or use emojis or whatever, go ahead and do that. Um, please put the questions that you have in the, in the question and answers function box. Um, and I, it's not that I care that if you ask questions in the chat, but I don't want to miss questions. So please put the questions in the Q and A so that I know that they're there. Um, also on top of that, while I'm going through the presentation, feel free to ask questions. Um, I know that some people like when they see something or they hear something explained, they have a question right then and there, but then they wanna wait for the Q and A session at the end. Um, 
I will try to stop at natural sections in the presentation to answer any pertinent questions. Um, or otherwise, you can wait until the Q and A session. But I, I really suggest that if you have a question, just put it in the Q and A, and we'll eventually get to it. So <clears throat> let's get going. Let's talk about digital marketing. So the first thing I like to do here is to show kind of what not to do in social media marketing. Um, there's a lot. Okay, so there's a lot of accounts out there. There's a lot of Twitter accounts and a lot of Facebook accounts and a lot of YouTube accounts. Um, and occasionally people are going to make mistakes, especially and even big businesses. Um, I had the pleasure of working for some really big businesses and doing consulting with them. And not a single one of them was immune to posting bad things. So the first thing is, this is a good example of it. Um, so I don't know if maybe I, I can give it a minute and you guys can use the chat to talk about like what might be wrong with this picture. Um, this was, you know, like a hair care company and it was, you know, an innocent attempt to show, I don't know, various hairstyles and how to do some hair care and to sell their product. And maybe some of you can see where that went wrong. <laughs> Kara, uh, Kara, Kara, Kara. Uh, um, sorry, I hope I got that right. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> that is that is exactly why. And Belinda said not engaging. That's true. Um, the the important thing here is it, and that people picked up with on very quickly when this was posted was that they said you know frizzy and dull hair or dry and damaged hair is specifically. A, a black woman's problem and that's so wrong on so many levels and really really offensive so this is the kind of stuff that we want to try and stay away from um just you know you have to a lot of a lot of these are just very tone deaf and it's because you know you think of you think up all these strategies are like maybe this could be engaging or maybe people could really like this and then you do it and you're like oh no so it's the importance of thinking things through. Here's another one. See if maybe uh, can, does someone recognize this cloud formation maybe? Anyone? I might be showing my age here. Yeah, Bruce, Shelley. Challenger explosion, rocket explosion. Yep, that's what it was. So someone uh, on the social media team at American Apparel thought they saw this um, cloud thing and they thought it looked good. So they Photoshopped it a little bit and then they put it on their on their social media. They thought it was cool. It was probably a social media intern, probably someone really young who had no idea what Challenger was. And so when obviously when people saw that, you know, I think it was like five or six astronauts died in this. And so that's... <laughs> That's really bad. And then you try and like make it look like, oh, look at this artsy explosion. Like, <laughs> like that's so bad. Um, then we have this one, which is like a, you know, doing a pizza that's like never forget for 9-11. Like, come on, man. Just super tone deaf. Like you're you're this was like six thousand people died and you're making a pizza about it. Like, get out of here. Um, <clears throat> then we have Chase, uh, just again, super tone deaf. Um, you know, everyone's having money problems, you know, wage inequality is really bad. So you're, um, so, so people are struggling and especially after COVID, um, and then they throw this like, oh, you know, the reason that you're broke is because you go to Starbucks and that you don't eat your leftovers, like <laughs> get out of here, man. That's so bad. Um, and then we have IHOP. This one is actually really old. It's like seven years old. Um, this is. And, and you might think that I'm like making these, these are actual social media posts. These actually happened. I'm like, and, and and then you have to think about like, how many people did this get through before it got posted on social media? Like so many people approved this before it got to the social media intern. Like, come on, super, super insulting. <laughs> and then you have like this one where these guys heard that 
someone in the research department was like instead of instead of uh uh i can't remember actually what the actual olympic was was it pyongyang i think it was and someone was like yeah it's pf chains and like it was like a joke or something and then it got out onto the news so <laughs> pf change 2018 and this is kind of just to show the importance of doing your research and being timely with what you're doing. So anyway, now that that fun is out of the way, um, let's talk about digital marketing real quick. Um, so what is digital marketing? Digital marketing is basically any kind of marketing you can do on electronic devices. So that includes email marketing and content marketing and social media marketing. Those are the big ones. Um, there is also stuff like social uh, search engine marketing, uh, digital advertising, all that good stuff. It all falls under the digital marketing uh, umbrella. And why why should you use it? And we'll talk a little bit about this on inbound versus outbound, but generally with digital marketing, your targeting is much, much better. Your segmentation is much better. Um, you can use segmentation techniques more efficiently. Um, so you have the different segmentations like psychographic, behavioral, demographic, occasional, um, and all of these work a lot better on digital platforms because it's unfortunate to say, but a lot of these <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they all collect a lot of personal information. They, they look at what you post and what you like and what you retweet. And all of that gets turned into a persona of you or your audience. And that makes it much easier to target these people. Um, especially people inside of your target market. And then the return on investment is a lot better. Um, whereas you don't, in traditional marketing, you're kind of throwing money into a black hole and hoping that people come back to you. Um, with digital marketing, you can track your ROI basically on a minute by minute basis. Um, are you, are your ad, is your advertising making up for the investment that you put into it? Or is your social media marketing doing this? So, or your content marketing or your email marketing? And as business owners, I don't need to say how important that is. We need to know where that money is going and whether our marketing dollars are being impactful. Um, the, the benefits of digital marketing um, are just outstanding. Um, not only the ROI, better targeting, but it's just a better way to have a conversation with your, with your target market to get, for people to get to know you better um, as a person and as a business. And then we have the relationship to traditional marketing, which is sort of, um, uh, again, on the inbound versus outbound, which we're about to talk about right now. <clears throat> so outbound marketing, we, we call it outbound because you're kind of shouting into a void. It's outbound. Um, we term digital marketing as inbound because we want it to come into us. And that's a simple way of putting it. So you have traditional marketing, which are TV ads, radio ads, billboard ads, trade shows, cold calling, spam emails. The problem with it now that we've moved into like the 2020s is that it's impossible to track the ROI. It's impossible to track who's actually seeing it. Not impossible, but difficult. Um, you don't really have a lot of KPIs or key performance indicators that you can look at. Um, there are a lot of blocking techniques now, like my phone, for example, doesn't allow spam calls at all or spam messages. It just goes into like a black box on my phone that never gets opened. It doesn't even like when I get a spam phone call, my phone doesn't even ring. So, I mean, our, our ad blocking is just tremendous. Um, then you have stuff like streaming services and DVRs that bypass commercials entirely um, or, you know, ad free packages and all that stuff where, generally on a day-by-day -day basis, someone who doesn't actually just watch TV will not see any sort of advertising except on social media or on digital platforms. Um, it's very high cost and the cost is only rising as we go further into the years. Um, and as digital marketing starts to take a bigger and bigger chunk out of things. Um, and then again, the lack of targeting. Uh, so inbound marketing is generally about content creation using social media to spread your brand. Um, we want to have like a good solid goal, which I'm gonna talk about later in the presentation. And we want to use that to push our message out um, and then to pull people in. And there's a, there's, a, there's a research process, there's a time scale that people follow on inbound marketing where we wanna turn them from strangers into people that actually promote our brand. 
by going on their social media and saying, I just bought this, this is really good, or by leaving a review on Yelp or on Google. These sorts of things turn people into promoters and that's what we really want. It pulls people to you. You have on social media marketing in general and in inbound marketing particularly, um, your ROI is immensely measurable again, and you have key performance indicators that are easy to track. Um, these are things such as, you know, uh, engagement or impressions or dwell times and bounce rates and all that good stuff. Um, my analogy here is don't hunt for a rhino in the jungle, hunt for it at the watering hole, which means go to where your target market is. Um, not like by doing a radio ad where 90% of the audience has no interest in what you're doing. So here's the time scale I was talking about. And we want to take people from being strangers to our brand. And this is the same as like a regular marketing time scale. We just add a little more. Um, we want to turn, we, we not only want leads to turn into customers, but we want customers to turn into promoters. And we do that by engaging with them on social media, engaging on with, with them through email marketing. Um, you do things like social marketing or social monitoring, CR, using your CRM to do, create workflows and automations. Um, so, for example, that would be like if someone signs up or if someone buys something off of your website, then they'll get put in a little pot for your email marketing and they'll get a welcome email. And then a couple of days later, they might get like coupons or something like that. And it goes on and on as they engage with you. Um and all this stuff, the blogs, keywords, social publishing, forms, calls to actions, landing pages, all of that takes people from being strangers to your brand, hopefully to becoming promoters themselves. And that's what we really want to do. And that's where we get a lot of really good ROI in digital marketing is by turning people into advertising platforms for our business. So, and, and that's not just through social media. It could be word of mouth or digital word of mouth, just like social media. Um, where someone goes to your bar or someone goes to your restaurant and says, this food is amazing. So they say it in their Google reviews, they tell their friends, they tell people online and they become promoters for your brand that you, all you did was serve them food. So that's what we want, that big impact. And that starts by knowing your audience and talking to them through social media, getting to know them. Um, so here, let's, let's talk about some, some social media platforms. There are a lot. Um, this is by no means a complete list and it's certainly not, um, ordered. So if I was going to say that the top one right now, um, depending on what you're doing is probably like, uh, TikTok or Instagram. Um, but you have YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Twitter, WhatsApp, TikTok, Reddit, Nextdoor, and the social media aggregation platform. So YouTube is a video platform. Obviously everyone knows YouTube. Uh, Facebook is just a generalized social media platform. Instagram is a picture-based platform. Pinterest, I'm going to stop here and say that Pinterest is actually a very interesting and very useful social media platform if you have an online like e-commerce business. So if you sell any sort of plat or any sort of service or, or uh, product online, Pinterest is really good for you simply because they have direct linking to websites. So if I click on a pin or something like that, then I go directly to a website or I go directly to a product page or a landing page. Um, and that makes Pinterest really, really good. On top of that, 80 to 85% of Pinterest users specifically go to Pinterest just to shop. So if you are, you know, trying to sell something online, that makes Pinterest invaluable. So that's something to think about. Um, LinkedIn is more about business stuff and things like that. Uh, Snapchat, eh, forget about Snapchat. Twitter is not great for business anymore. It used to be really, really good. Um, it depends on your audience. Uh, if you run a more serious type of business, something that's a little more in the zeitgeist, I guess, then Twitter could work for you as a way to to show off your, maybe you have some humor or something like that. That's a good place to do it. Um, but most people on Twitter are not there to talk to businesses or to shop. Um, they're there to engage in conversation. And so that makes it a little tougher to do business oriented stuff, especially if you're a business to business type business. Um, 
say that fast five times. Uh, so then we have WhatsApp, uh, TikTok. TikTok is really good for businesses and especially for some businesses that like, let's say um, I have a client that makes dog vests. So cute little dog vests for small little doggies. Um, and basically every picture she takes is gold. It's like social media gold. Um, and by just showing off stuff like on TikTok with short, quick videos, um, she could have a great audience. And if you stick to the conversion rate of the average conversion rate of maybe like two or 3%, then if you get a thousand views on that, then you've got a good business going. So, and generally you can do a lot more than that. Uh, so if you have this sort of business that can interface well with the audience on TikTok, which are like Gen Z and late or early millennials, yeah, late millennials, um, generally like 18 to 27 thereabouts, then you can do really well on TikTok. It just requires a little bit of creativity. Um, then you have Reddit, which is sort of just like an online forum, it's very popular. Next door. Hopefully everybody is familiar with Nextdoor. It's it's sort of about doing geographical segmentation. Uh, so if you um, if you were if you if your business requires that you serve customers in a specific mileage or a specific range, then Nextdoor can be very good for you. Um, so like if you're a retail store, for example, um, that would do really well. And then social media aggregation platform programs and platforms, which are is kind of like the most important thing on this list. Um, you have, there are a couple come to mind right away, Buffer and Hootsuite. Um, these are programs that can pull in all of your social media channels. So let's say, um, you do Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah, not, not YouTube, the, just the first three. And you put them all together in one single platform and you can view the conversations, which I'm going to talk about how important that is. And you can post on there, you can do scheduling and all that good stuff. Um, I use a specific one of those programs. I'm not going to tell you which one. They're both good. Um, I just don't want to feel like I'm advertising something. <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, and that makes it a lot better because usually what we'll say is, okay, I want you to get good at one or two of these platforms. I would never tell you, and I hope a digi another digital marketing consultant wouldn't tell you to do all of these. You cannot do it. You don't have the time. You don't have the resources. Pick one or two and get really, really good at them. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't go on every single one of these and secure your account. So if you are if you have a restaurant like, I don't know, uh, BriaTacos.com or something, and then you can secure those usernames on all of the social media accounts. I would suggest you do that in case you want to use them later or, you know, you get big and you have a marketing department, then you can start using them. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> and circling back to YouTube, um, we used to not count that um, as a social media platform, but it's becoming more and more a social media platform, especially since it started to grab a huge chunk of search. Um, if you think about search engines, you know, you have like Google being uh, Yandex and uh, DuckDuckGo, Yahoo. Um, Google and YouTube are like 90% of that market share. So, and obviously owned by the same company. So it's important to actually use YouTube if you can, if you have the ability to make videos and stuff like that. And that counts as social media marketing, especially if you're talking and engaging with, customers through it. All right. <clears throat> so basic, so let's let's actually talk about content on social media. So what can you actually post? Um, usually the first thing we'll suggest is adjacent content. Um, and adjacent content are things that are slightly or more than slightly related to the business you actually do. So again, if we go back to the restaurant, if you run a restaurant, it's pretty easy to have blog posts or social media posts about food. Um, I had this great meal, or here's a recipe, or here's the best three pizza recipes, or you know, here's the best tools to use if you're making a specific dish, or whatever you want to do. That the all counts as adjacent content if it's related. If you have that restaurant and it's related to food, that's all stuff that you can post. 
and it's still in the realm of making sense. Um, but if you're constantly like, if you're a restaurant, and you're constantly posting like political stuff, no one's going to understand what you're doing. And so you kind of want to stay on topic that way by not, by not going out too far. There is a little bit here that I'll say several times, and that is first and foremost, be a human being on social media. That means don't have like a really sanitized tone. Don't just talk purely about the business. Um, it should be so that people can see that there's a human behind that phone or behind that computer. Show off having a sense of humor and things like that. It's very important. And I mentioned it several times later on. Um, you can talk about tips and tricks. This one is really good. And especially like stuff like tips and tricks and lists. Uh, so like, again, I, during, in my, in my examples there, I was like the three best recipes that expert chefs suggest you have or something like that. Right. Um, tips and tricks would be something like, here's how, you know, a quick tip on how to keep your toilet from clogging or to keep your shower from clogging, or I don't, I don't know why I have like clogs on my mind, but whatever. Um, and so tips and tricks and stuff like that in that area are extremely important because they're really they show they not only show your expertise but they also provide value to someone reading your social media and so if i got like if i was just scrolling your social media i was scrolling your facebook or your instagram and you had a short video showing me how to do something based on your business then not only would i be more likely to engage with your business I would also feel like I've already gotten value out of our relationship and it turns people more towards that goal of becoming promoters. <clears throat> uh, then we have conversations, just generalized conversation. That means either underneath your post, someone posts something and they say, oh, this is a great idea. And you could say, hey, thanks. This is, you know, we thought about this for a while and we wanted to post it and give good information. And you can just become a part of the conversation on your own social media channels or on others. Um, <clears throat> very important and again that goes back to the being human type thing um you want to make sure that this conversation seems like a conversation between two people and not a conversation with a business <clears throat> um then you have non-promotional company information it's like um let's say let's going back to the restaurant uh and one of the one of the waiters has a birthday and so you you buy them a cake and you have a little party before the shift or after the shift. You pull everybody together, have the cake, have a few beers, have some laughs, take a video of it, take some pictures, share that on social media. Look, hey, it was <clears throat> it was Bob's birthday yesterday and we celebrated and we did all this stuff. And that stuff, people on social media and that we all kind of use to live vicariously through, um, eat that up. They love it. So try to post stuff like that as well. Uh, job openings are really good for social media um, because you know that people that are following you or interacting with you on social media already have some sort of investment in what you're doing. They like what you're doing or something like that. They wouldn't be following you otherwise. So that's a good place to start to look for employees. And then jokes, being lighthearted if your brand allows for it. Like obviously if CNN, if the CNN Twitter started cracking dad jokes, we might think, okay, maybe they need to hire a different intern to manage that social media channel. Um, <clears throat> so if it's appropriate, putting humor into, like you could have, maybe you could start off each day with a joke, like on, on Twitter or on Facebook or something like that, just write out a joke. And if, it, if your brand allows for that sort of non-serious interaction, then it's really good because it shows off again, how human you are. And we want people to know that you're a human. Uh, and here we're going to talk about some stuff, but I, I have a good meme for that. Um, <laughs> always, this is also a um, an example of being relevant. You know, the Will Smith slap was a big thing. So um, <clears throat> sharing and publishing content. So um specifically updating update frequency so i think one of the one of the most common questions i get as a digital marketing consultant is how often should i post and that question is kind of unanswerable 
um, it depends on the platform that you're on and it depends on the audience. If you were making YouTube videos, it may only be once or twice a week or it may only be once a week or once every two weeks. Um, if you're on Twitter, then it might be five or six times a day. If you're on Facebook, then it might be three or four or five times a week. So it really depends on how much your audience can take and how much the platform actually like works with it. So um, it's really hard to set a good number. I did give some ballpark examples just then. Um, most of the time, it will be up to you to decide, okay, look at your, so you'll, you'll be posting and you'll be looking at the KPIs. So how much impressions, how many impressions did this post get? What's the engagement rate? How many people liked it or retweeted it or whatever, depending on the platform you're on. And as you go on, you'll start to get a feeling for what your audience wants. And every audience is going to be different from business to business. It's impossible to nail down. So maybe some, maybe posts on Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and Sunday mornings do really well for your audience. And the opposite of those days, you know, like Monday, Monday nights and Wednesday at noon, people don't engage with as much. So you'll have to take that, those, that analytics information and turn it into a strategy that can work for you. Um, specifically engagement. Um, you may make sure that you're responding to mentions, questions, commentary, um, and reviews. Uh, even, even bad reviews should get a polite response. Um, specifically on reviews, like if you get a bad review, please, for the love of all that is holy, do not respond angrily to these people. Um, even if you know they're wrong, and they just, you know, they came in to cause problems and then they left a bad review because you wouldn't give them a taco with, I don't know, fruit in it or something. <laughs> and, and they were just being totally unreasonable and then they went and made like a really bad review. Um, respond politely. Hey, you know, I'm sorry you had this experience with us. Please allow us to try and do better if you come back. And people will see that and see, okay, Positive, positive uh, responses to reviews always show that a business is a good business. And there's, I, I wish I had put the statistic in here, um, but I didn't. So now I can't remember it. But <clears throat> businesses that have positive replies to bad reviews do almost do better than businesses that have no bad reviews and have no replies to any reviews. So engaging with your customers and you know, your past customers is really good. Um, and then on social media, just being a part of the conversation in general. Um, again, if people mention you or people ask questions under your posts or something like that, or even if there's commentary like, oh, this is really neat. Um, and then, then you just, oh, you know, I'm glad you liked it. And even just doing something as simple as responding to some of these people can turn customers into lifelong customers, into promoters. And that's what we're going after. Um, over time, you're going to want to formulate the content strategy that you'll have. Um, again, it really depends on your business, on your target market, um, on the platforms that you're actually using. Um, I'm trying to remember if I talk about it, but I'll, I'll go into it here. Um, so <clears throat> with specifically engagement, um, and a content strategy, these, the most important thing is consistency on social media. So if you, let's say you start out, you start your business, you're gung-ho to get into social media or to into digital marketing because that's what everybody's doing these days. And you're like, okay, I'm going to post seven days a week. I'm going to make one post every single day. And then after this is, I mean, this always happens. Uh, and I'm telling you, these are, this is not me making stuff up. Everybody does this. Um, a lot of people that talk to me have done this. So they start their business, they post a lot. And then after a month or two, they think that the engagement and impressions while going up a little bit is not enough. And is it really proper for me to be spending my time doing this? <clears throat> and then they stop or they slow down. So instead of doing like the seven posts a day, now we're doing, or the seven posts a week, now we're doing like one post a week or zero posts a week. 
And that is literally the worst thing you could do. Um, it would be, it would have been better if you had not started at all. Um, what a social media platform, the algorithms that all govern them really want to see is that content providers are actually making content and doing so regularly so that they can show users that content. Um, so if you stop, then they think, okay, this person does not exist anymore. This business does not exist anymore. I am never showing their stuff again. And so it's really hard to dig yourself out of that hole. I mean, not impossible. You can do it by continuing to be consistent if you pick it back up. But the worst thing you can do is slow down and stop. So when we talk about formulating a content strategy, the very first thing should be coming up with like a social media calendar and um, posting regularly and coming up with a cadence that you can keep up with. So even if it's only like two times a week or something like that, which is kind of bare bones for certain platforms, um, it, the most important thing is that you can manage the time. So keep that in mind when you're creating the strategy. Also, the content calendar, very important. Just, you know, you don't need to download a fancy one. Just use your own business calendar and say, okay, Instagram post on Tuesday and Thursday. And usually I like to, I like to do them a month in advance. Um, and then, so, and those will be my scheduled posts. And then uh, in the middle of the week, if I want to post something random or I think of something or I have like a weird dream and it reminds me of something, then I'll just post randomly throughout the, throughout the week. Um, you can you know, also sales and stuff like that. Just make sure you schedule that stuff and you're consistent about it. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Consistent branding and voice is important. First, um, if you're going to have like a tinge of humor, that's okay. Like it doesn't mean that you can't be humorous and also be serious about things. Um, but what it means is that you shouldn't like, um, I hate to use a political reference, but if you're, let's say you're a Republican and then, and then the next day you're a Democrat, like that's a really, really big switch. And so that's what we're talking about when it comes to voice in your branding. Um, don't flip that switch like so to where you're completely different the next day. Um, make sure that the voice that you use is consistent through all of your channels. So social media, content marketing, email marketing, your website, make sure it's consistent throughout. Um, you wanna make sure that the colors are the same um, and that the logo is the same. I see this a lot, people use like, They'll use a different logo in their email and then their social media channels all have a different logo and their website has a different logo. And that's really confusing to potential customers. Am I actually in the right spot? Like this one has a logo and the colors are like green and red. And then I go to their website and it has a different logo and their colors are like yellow and orange or yellow and blue or something like that. And so now I'm wondering, like, am I actually in the right place? Is this the right website? Did I go to the wrong place? And so this is just for consistency and for recall. We want people to remember our brand. That means that we need to have consistency throughout our channels. Um, and that goes the same with fonts and all that other good stuff. Um, so knowing your audience, this, this little tip has been kind of woven through my entire presentation that knowing your audience, being on brand and being relevant to that environment are super important and it comes over time. So eventually you will get to know your target audience or you already know your target audience and you know what they respond to and the tone of voice that you can take and the amount of humor you can insert without crossing a line. Um, so if you, as long as you know your audience, the most of the work for social media is already done for you. All you have to do is actually post um, and keep to a schedule, a consistent schedule. Um, knowing your audience is really half the battle. Uh, once you know your audience, you can target them really, really well. And that doesn't just mean with advertising. It's just generally general conversation. Again, in caps and bolded, be human. Remember that you're a human and not just a human, but a you know an entrepreneur, a business owner that is you know driven by you, a human being, with customers that are human beings. And so, again, I cannot stress this enough. Show some personality, show some humor if you can. 
these things, being human, having those conversations is so important to marketing that it needs to be hammered into you. Um, don't just be a sanitized business on social media that just talks about, here's our product, blah, blah, blah. Like that's so boring. Have some conversations um, and integrate your campaigns across channels. So if you, let's say you're having a sale, like a Mother's Day sale or something like that, um, make sure that that goes across all of your channels. So if you have Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, make sure that on all three of those, the the sale is done. So like if you if you don't have if you put, post a sale on Facebook, but you don't post it on Instagram, people are going to think it might be a scam or you got hacked or something like that. Um, these are, I mean, those are random examples. And you're also not reaching your entire audience because you'll have an audience on all the platforms. <clears throat> and then, you know, it needs to match your website. What if you like said, um, you know, we're having a Mother's Day sale and then I go to your website and there's no mention of the Mother's Day sale. Like then I'm going to feel duped. So we want to involve that. Just make sure that all the campaigns, no matter what it is, whether it's, you know, just generalized marketing or, you know, a, like a sale, like a Mother's Day sale or coupons or free shipping or something like that. Just make sure it all goes across all the channels. Um, <clears throat> let me get some water here. Okay. So I have some, some quick tips here. Um, The best way to to start these are just like these are just important things to know. Um, so the first one is what's your story? Um, this is very very popular across all of digital marketing. Is that we want to know the story behind your business? What challenges did you face and overcome? Um, how did you actually come up with the business? Um, what was the purpose behind it? Are you trying to help people? Is it just because you want to make money? You want to be your own boss? What's the story? Um, and that's why about pages are really, really popular on websites. Um, one of the most visited page on a website, challenging even the front page. So because people want to know that story, they want to live vicariously through it. They want to know that someone out there has faced these challenges down and maybe one day they can do it themselves. So Share your story. Um, and it also encourages people to take action. You know, oh, you know, this person did it. I can too. Um, be consistent with your content and try and go above and beyond the original. Um, <clears throat> that means basically, like, you, for example, if, if you make a living on social media just sharing adjacent content and sharing nothing original, you're not going to have a good time. It's going to be a bad, it's going to be a bad experience for you. Because while that may be good in spurts, it's not great in a, at a consistent basis. So <clears throat> it needs to be a mixture of original content, you know, the tips and tricks, the lists and all that good stuff. Um, make sure that there's, there's a mix of it and that you're consistent with that. <clears throat> so this is, you know, basically just conversation means that you get a return on your ROI. Um, that turns people into customers having conversations with them, or at least it creates a relationship that you can then turn into a conversion. Um, the best way to look at it is that it's virtual networking, literally virtual word of mouth. You're getting to know people, people are getting to know you, people are telling other people about you. And so if you think about the general social media marketplace as a gigantic hotel ballroom where you have a name tag and you go around, you shake hands, you give them your elevator pitch. This is what my business is. Um, maybe we can work together sometime. Here's my business card. Um, or maybe you want to buy something from me. Then you'll have some good success if you can picture it that way. Um, that is what social media is. It's just that big room full of a bunch of people who are just like you and respond to the same triggers. So having a conversation, creating a relationship with them is, is very important. Um, starting small is good. Um, I talked about this when we, when we talked about the actual frequency of content um, and, the cons and the importance of that consistency. So start small, watch the audience. Um, if you're, you know, measure how well you do on certain days, 
what is the engagement rate on Wednesday versus Thursday? And then from there, you can decide, okay, here are the days I'm going to post and here's my frequency. Um, quality over quantity. So <clears throat> the, big, the big thing here is we don't want quantity to overcome you. Um, that, that means that a lot of people fall into this trap where they're like, I have to post five, five times a week or I have to post seven times a week or 14 times a week and they overwhelm themselves. And I've said this before, but then the, some people will just give up, but some people will try to keep that by lowering the content quality. So instead of writing a paragraph and using a few hashtags, they'll just write a sentence, post a picture and you're done. That's really low quality content and we wanna avoid that. So <clears throat> quality always trumps quantity, always. The more that like, let's say the algorithms on social media, for example, will see a piece of content, will see how long someone interacts with it. And we call that dwell time. So the longer that person dwells on that post, reads that information and interacts with it, the better. So if you just have like one single sentence and one picture that's kind of boring and people just like scroll right past it, that's not great. So quality over quantity. So um, visuals, I can't believe I waited until 11.49 to, <laughs> to talk about this. Every single post on social media needs to have an image. Posts with images have 90% more engagement than posts without, including like on Twitter, except in like certain circles. There are certain like, I'm not even going to bother. You're not going to do that. So please stay away from Twitter. Um, <laughs> but so like Instagram is obviously you have to. And Facebook and platforms like that require basically an image in order to get some kind of engagement. <clears throat> Um, again, the second bullet point here is again, be human, warm, authentic, and kind of put yourself in the shoes of your customers. How do they want to see you? Um, <laughs> buy a dictionary and use it. Um, that means don't misspell things. Don't make grammatical errors. Um, actually, if it's on brand for you to be a little imperfect, then that's good. But generally, you just want to avoid grammatical mistakes. And I know that kind of clashes with the whole be human thing, but we don't want to look unprofessional. And that's the problem. So, you know, I would also maybe, maybe when you're out buying a dictionary, you could buy a, th a thesis too, a thesis, and use different words. <laughs> um, so, not all the content needs to be original, but you want to be a source of trending content. That's where adjacent content comes in. Um, the biggest one here is kind of fashion. Uh, fashion and food are the big ones here, where adjacent content has a lot of different avenues you can follow and that your industry has trends that you can follow. Um, <clears throat> study your competition. Uh, you know, do your SWOT analysis occasionally, watch their social media channels, watch their website, see what they're doing, see what they're talking about, and see where they participate in dialogues. So if they're very busy on Instagram, it may be good to go to another social media platform. It may be good to challenge them on that social media platform and you can see what they're doing and apply it to your own, to your own stuff, to your own uh, strategy. <clears throat> um, be useful. Uh, again, this goes back to like the tips and tricks type stuff. Uh, if you can show that you're useful to an audience member, then that's the most important thing because I feel like I've already gotten something out of that relationship. Uh, don't take on too much. Uh, and we're going to talk about likability here in a second. Um, so identify the goals and make a plan, whether that's, um, you know, I want to increase my engagement 20% next month, or I want to increase my impressions by 50% over three months. Whatever that goal is, make a plan to meet that goal. Um, and that's just general, you know, that's not specific to social media marketing. Um, share something small every day. It can be good, like the jokes I was talking about, like maybe you wake up and just post a joke. Um, focus on who you're trying to reach and how you can make them successful. And this goes back to being useful. Um, 
maybe you show that tip of how to unclog a sink or whatever, right? And eventually I will find that useful and I'll remember that. <clears throat> um, learning from experts, specifically, like you're already kind of doing that, you're in this webinar. So, hey, good job, you're doing it. Um, don't expect immediate results, it takes time. Uh, so like if you just started like a social media channel right now, it would take at least a few months before you saw any traction. Um, it's, even if you stu stuck to a content calendar, your content was pretty good, unless you were spending money to get engagement and impressions and followers, um, then you can bounce out pretty quickly. <clears throat> uh, personality, be human again, be informative, be useful. Um, and again, be in the shoes of your customers. <clears throat> so likability. Um, so we have the the big three, familiarity, trust, and likability are important parts of social media marketing and digital marketing in general. Um, and again, we're kind of just be human, okay? Be present, be there during the conversations. Be sure to catch conversations when they happen, which means that you have to kind of monitor your social channels, which kind of goes back to that social media aggregation platforms I was talking about which make it really easy to monitor conversations. <clears throat> Go off topic every once in a while, add value, offer assistance. Um, a big one here, don't be exclusionary. Um, you know, don't say that this is only for people who are over 30 or, <laughs> or people who, you know, who are just vegans. Like social media is a different thing from your business and you may have a target market, but that doesn't mean that you should be excluding people. And this actually happens a lot. You might think it's, oh, well, this is just a social media channel. Like, how, how can you exclude people? By doing things that are provocative, by, you know, answering comments that don't really, you know, so if you have like a, like a comment where it's like, I don't understand this or something like that, it's like, good, I don't want you to understand it. You're right. You just want to stay away from that exclusionary type of voice. Um, social media, following social media etiquette is important. Uh, don't put like 30 hashtags on, on a post, for example. Um, the the best, like for, for Instagram, the best amount of hashtags is 11. Um, so if you can do 11, that's perfect. Um, anymore, you kind of, it's a bell curve. So you, you go more, you get less, but if you're right in the middle, you're good to go. So 11 hashtags. Um, and don't be pushy. Don't constantly message people or harangue people or anything like that. Um, and be aware of current events. Um, so like if <laughs> you definitely shouldn't have like a question, like if social media had existed at 9-11, then people are talking about, oh my God, 9-11 or, you know, planes ran into the towers and you're like, wait, what's going on? So you want to make sure that you're aware of current events so that you don't trip over your own feet and so that you can have a proper response to it. Social media overall. Here we, oh, and I, then I have the strategies in the next slide, so I gotta hurry up because that's important. Um, so content creation, learning and improving, exploring and discovering, question and answer. We talked about that already. Customer service, which I'm gonna stop here. Customer service is really good on social media. So when people are actually interacting with you, that's a great time to do customer service. So how was your order? Was the package, did the package come in good condition? You know. Was it wrapped properly? All that good stuff. And you can you can get feedback. You can offer customer service through social media. You can also do product development. Um, so like if you have a new product coming out or you have like a, let's say you're a restaurant, you have a new recipe that you're trying, maybe have, you know, like a cold open for that specific recipe, invite like 10 or 15 people off your social media and say, hey, come and try this. See, and and then just all, all I want, you'll get, you'll get a free meal, you get a free drink. All you have to do is give me some, some feedback on this or some feedback on my menu or feedback on my restaurant or the new decor or whatever. Um, and recruiting, I already talked about. So goals and strategies. Um, we use uh, digital marketing and specific uses smart goals. And that's just not like a digital marketing type thing. It's, it's a general goal strategy. Um, so we want them to be specific, measurable, attainable and relevant in the time. So like, and, and I already kind of talked about like maybe we increase engagement over the month or something like that. Um, and then we want to track the meaningful metrics. So we want to track awareness, engagement, conversions, and customer retention. 
um, through like testimonials and social media sentiment, like how are people actually talking about you online? Um, and you, you will get this presentation. So um, yeah, because I have two slides left. <clears throat> so we want to create uh, customer personas. Um, that just means that we're gonna use segmentation to create our perfect customer. Um, and that's who we're gonna be talking to on social media. And that's where our voice, where our voice actually comes in. Um, we want to avoid making assumptions about them. We wanna gather data instead. And that goes through segmentation. It goes through impressions and engagement. Um, it goes through commenting and watching your social channels. Um, so listening. And then audit the social media regularly. What's working, what's not, who's engaging with us, who's not, what audiences do we would like to have engaging with us that aren't? Um, which platforms does our do our target does our target audience use? Um, are we using the correct platforms? So maybe you have like your your customer base is really Gen Z focused. So if you're not on TikTok, you're doing it wrong. Um, how does our presence compare to our competitors? Again, competitor an analysis and set it, setting up your profile on every social media account, which I talked about. Um, regularity, I've already kind of talked about this, but posting often, we want consistency, create a content calendar and schedule posts, um, using the content correctly, the proper number of words. So like on Instagram, for example, you may wanna have, um, three to four sentences, maybe 100 to 150 words uh, right around there. And it's kind of the same you want to, but it's going to be, it's going to be unique to your audience. So it might change. Um, make sure your content is valuable, has, you know, is valuable to a customer or a potential customer and ideate. Um, this, I just threw in ideation. Um, so because that's an important part of creating content, not just in content marketing, but in email marketing and social media marketing, you're going to have problems coming up with the content that you kind of want to post, the stuff that you want to schedule two times or three times a week. Um, the best way to do this is to follow adjacent channels. So if you have a restaurant, follow food channels, follow the food network, follow different chefs, see what they're doing. Maybe that will spark some ideas. Um, look for you know adjacent channels and inspirational channels and get out of the house. You know, take a drive, take a walk, go to Starbucks, just get out of your environment for a little bit, 15, 20 minutes, an hour, and that will jog your memory to get some stuff going. Okay, questions. I went through the whole presentation without having a single question. That's amazing. So I'll give it a minute for question. I know we're a little over, um, but, you know, since people are already still here, you can go ahead and ask questions. If you have any, if not, you can. So I'll, I'll go on while we wait for questions. Maybe someone will put them in the box. Um, this is our website. And um, if you need general business assistance, um, it's good to go here, OCIE small business.org. Um, you'll go through an intake process where they're at, well, where they're at they, they will ask about your business, um, what sort of assistance you require, where you're located, things like that. Um, <clears throat> Here is my email address. Oh, well, it's gonna be in there anyway, but I'll, I'll put it. And my count only. If you wanna make an appointment directly with me. Um, how do you build up more audience? Um, the first thing, how to build up more audience is just generally being consistent on social media and posting often. Um, the first, like, let's say, okay, Raphael, if you are just starting out on social media, like you've never done anything on social media, you just started your business, you're getting going with your marketing. The best thing you can do is pick a few, um, pick a few channels that you want to use, let's say Facebook and Instagram, and just start posting, be consistent and create a, a cadence that you can live with. So maybe that's posting three times a week. And we'll say that. So from then on, the most important thing about building up your audience from that point is to remain consistent and follow the tips like, you know, make sure that what you're posting is useful. Um, make sure it is actually like 
content that you can bite into that may be useful to a, to one of your audience members. And then follow the data. Make sure that you're posting at the right times on the right days. Experiment with it. When I say three times a week, that doesn't mean it has to be Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It can be any day of the week. You could do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And just watch the data and see how people interact with you and when they interact with you. Uh, over time, you will get a very clear sense of what your audience is trying to see and what they're trying to do and when they like to do it. Um, so building the audience from scratch is a, is a long drawn out process, um, but maintaining consistency, I think would be my top tip. Question, Ryan. Um, I'm sorry if you've already probably shared this, but is there a resource out there that can help us identify which social media to use based on the age group that you're trying to target? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are like, you could, you could Google, like what sort of platform should I use? Um, generally I, I can say for the big ones. Um, so for Facebook, you, you want anywhere between the, the largest demographic on Facebook is like 35 to 40 something, um, followed very closely by like the boomer ages. Um, and then you have Instagram, which is a slightly younger crowd. That's mostly millennials. Um, and then you have TikTok, which is mostly like Gen Z and uh, late millennial. Um, and those are the big ones. Pinterest has different things like, okay, so Pinterest is mostly, is mostly women over 20, 25 uh, and lots of shoppers, though that's, that's starting to change. Pinterest is doing a really good job of targeting men too. Um, so that's starting to change a little bit, but right now it's mostly still women. Um, and let's see, YouTube is for everybody. There's no real difference there. Um, that, those are the big ones. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Ryan, for taking the time to just share these valuable tips with us. I'm super excited to get going on it and just making use of them. Um, again, this webinar is being recorded, so we will share this at the end, as, along with your contact information on the PowerPoint. Thank you to the Small Business Development Center for allowing us to have you here, Ryan. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we close it? Do you have an upcoming event that you'd like to invite them to in a webinar? Um, we are doing, right now I'm doing uh, the advanced section of my website, Basics for Business. Um, we just did SEO optimized content. Next week, we'll be talking about analytics and how to connect them to advertising. So if you have a website and you're interested, um, I think uh, Maria can give the link for that and you can put that in the information you send out. Um, it's a ocieesbdc.org slash web hyphen advanced, I think. Perfect, no worries. I'll make sure to send that over as we um, close this webinar. Also, lastly, as you know, I am sharing on the screen, um, the Greater Rochella Valley Chamber would like to invite you to attend our evening mixer here in La Quinta. It's going to be Wednesday, August 16th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. You don't have to be a member. As you can see, I do have a promo code on in red. Um, use um, Welcome22 to attend for free. As well, another GCV Educates, this one is in person at the Hilton Garden Inn. This one's focused on how to read minds and influence people. So Dr. Carol Chrisman is a professor at College of the Desert. He's also, also a speaker and author who travels around the U.S. to give this presentation. It's about reading body language, communication, and just how to um, reach those organizational goals. So I invite you all attend. These are for free. Um, for the evening mixer, please use Welcome 22. It might get to the point where you will ask uh, for a card. Just exit after that, and I will go ahead and make sure that you are registered by following up with an email. Again, Ryan, thank you so much for your time and all of the tips that you shared. Everyone, thank you for spending time with us. I have, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You also have a typo on that. Oh, thank you. Gosh, <laughs> see, <laughs> being human. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Right.